the forehead of your robot. Baldi's Basics in Education and Learning is considered by many to be a great game to many people. From a short game created for a game jam to a full game with multiple game modes, Baldi's Basics became a huge success. The game consists of you attempting to collect all seven notebooks, while avoiding other students and escaping the schoolhouse alive. Pretty basic stuff, don't you think? Well, what if I were to tell you that this wasn't just the bright idea of an indie game developer and that it happens to originate from something much darker? Baldi's Story Baldi William Baldemore was born on May 3, 1954. Throughout his life, he loved to help out his friends and family and during his years in elementary school, he would always be excited to learn math. Sure he would have enjoyed English, social studies and geometry, but he loved math the most due to it being as simple as adding and subtracting numbers. The only problem is that the more he learned, the more his friends and other students began to find him to be quite the strangest kid, and by the time he got to middle school, more people began to dislike him for loving math. It got so bad to the point that he began losing friends and whenever he would try to do his classwork, other students would proceed to call him a nerd and that if he continued to learn that subject, his head would be too big for him and that he wouldn't be able to move around anymore. This caused Baldi to become more and more stressed out and upset and over time his grades began to plummet, going from A's to B's and C's, all the way to D's and F's. Eventually it got to the point where he couldn't even be bothered to do the work anymore, resulting in him having to be moved to another school. However, the school that he was moved to was far worse than the one he used to go to. His math teacher was more of a dick and whenever Baldi would forget how to do a problem or struggle in class, he would always get yelled at or even get spanked with a ruler and every student would laugh at him for his poor work. Baldi couldn't take it anymore and he decided to drop out of school for good. His mother felt pretty disappointed in him for dropping out of school, but as for his father, he was enraged. He would often call Baldi bad names and stated that he was a failure for quitting school and that by quitting school, he was asking for a terrible life. But as he got older, he began to feel less like the charming kid he used to be. No matter what he did to get help, he didn't seem to be getting any better and by 1974, he decided that enough was enough and left home to go and pursue his life. Here school was opened in 1983 with Baldi as the only teacher and Thomas Holland, also known by many as the principal of the thing. The school wasn't much of a school, but more of a math academy and for a while, things seemed to be pretty fine, but as time went on, he began to remember everything he had experienced back during his childhood. The laughing and goofing off, people picking on each other, everything bad from his time growing up was coming back to him. Now whenever someone goofed off in class or kept getting poor grades, Baldi would get extremely pissed off, take the student out of class and give them one of the worst possible ass weapons with his ruler. No matter what the students would tell the principal, Baldi would never get fired. Basically, there was just no way to stop his psychopath of a teacher. By the time 2004 came along and with the evolution of technology, Baldi decided to abolish paper and pencil in favor of these newfangled touchscreen devices that can work over the internet. However, this didn't make teaching or learning any better as tablets at the time were much bulkier and not as powerful. In fact, the tablets that Baldi bought were very clunky and would often mess up at times, causing some of the questions to appear as nothing but a jumbled mess of numbers and math symbols. One student tried to explain to Baldi that something was wrong with his tablet, but rather than give them a new one or allow him to do work on paper, he would say that it was all excuses and that It's too bad you can't understand basic math. Over time, the school began to get worse and worse. Students would end up going missing and many parents would report to Thomas that their kid's math teacher was being abusive and rude and that if things didn't change then they would take their kids to another school. Eventually in 2009, here school had been closed down and as for Baldi however, he has been arrested on the accounts of child abuse, murder and misconduct. It's told that he had recently broken out of prison and that he is now lurking around the now decrepit schoolhouse, waiting for any unexpected victim to enter. 
Thomas Holland, the principal of the thing's story. Thomas Holland was born on September 25, 1963, and throughout his life, he was pretty chill. He has many friends and got good grades in school, but shortly after he graduated, he had trouble trying to find a job. He wasn't for sure if he wanted to work for an IT company, work for the US forces, or if he wanted to be a freelancer. For a while, he kept thinking of what he wanted to do with his life, but the more he thought, he still wasn't for sure what job he wanted to work at. It wasn't until that one faithful day in 1983 that he would be working at the newly opened year school. He was thinking of maybe being a teacher, but Baldy suggested that he should be the principal instead. This intrigued Thomas, as he thought being a principal required great responsibility and meant that he had to make sure to watch out for anyone breaking the rules or causing any sort of trouble. But he knew he would be up to the task as when he was younger, he took responsibility in everything he did. So he agreed and was hired as the principal of year school. The first few days of him working as a principal went pretty well. Nobody was doing anything wrong, everything was perfect, until as he was walking down the hall to the faculty room, he couldn't swear he heard Baldy yelling at someone. Feeling worried about Baldy, Thomas entered the room, wanting to know what in God's name was going on in there. In the room, Baldy had one of his students bent over, crying. He had spanked and beaten the shit out of them, judging by the noticeable red marks. Thomas felt furious about the situation he was witnessing, while at the same time, feeling bad for the poor kid. He told Baldy that if he saw an act of violence like that again, that he would call the police and have him arrested, but as soon as he said that, Baldy went back to being aggressive. He told Thomas that if he even dared to speak of his actions to anyone, he would take his ruler and brutally murder him without hesitation. This scared Thomas to death, as he wasn't willing to be murdered over doing the right thing. He was just doing his job the way he was supposed to. So by the next few days, he decided to just let everything play out and to only stop kids from doing simple things such as eating, drinking, running and other kinds of things that were considered bad. In fact, he wasn't the one who created the list of rules. By the time 2004 had arrived and Baldy decided to get rid of paper and pencils in favor of tablets, he knew that things were going to get worse. Students kept coming up to Thomas's office to tell him about how they were being abused and were forced to keep quiet if they told him otherwise. But Thomas felt defenseless, as he still felt scared about what Baldy said to him. So he just told them that there was nothing he could do about these problems. But by the time the missing children cases came into light and a bunch of angry parents came in to tell the principal how much of a bad school it was, he decided that enough was enough. This had been going on for four years and it was about time he stopped being scared. He didn't want any more students to be brutally murdered, abused or being talked math by a psychopath. So he immediately called the cops and by the time they had got there, Baldy was moments away from harming another kid. Ever since that day, Thomas has not mentioned anything about the murders or the missing children. He didn't want to even remember the psychopath who let him work at that school. He now works as a supervisor at a local supermarket in Caldear and occasionally goes to see a therapist on days when he's off work. He now wishes he never came to that school and the memories still haunt him to this day. Sharon Lawrence, Playtime's Story Sharon Lawrence was born on April 7, 1984. To her family, she is a sweetheart who loved to play with the other kids in her neighborhood, but because of her poor eyesight, she has to wear glasses. During the first few years of her life, things weren't really that bad. But that all changed when she went to year school. Despite making a lot of new friends and playing at recess, she would often be treated harshly by Baldy. One time, she went out into the halls to go play with her favorite jump rope during Principal Thomas's coffee break, which caught his attention. As he was about to ask her what she was doing outside of class, Baldy came storming out of class and scolded her for leaving during his lesson, not before he proceeded to knock the principal onto the floor. Things got so bad that Baldy ended up destroying her jump rope and smacking the glasses off her face, causing her to cry. But instead of comforting or apologizing to her, he just told her to shut up and to go to the principal's office. After what had happened, Sharon never wanted to come back to hear school ever again. 
She has since taken classes at a different school and has been learning more than just math and has in fact made new friends over the years. She hopes that when she gets older that she'd want to get a job making beautiful artwork and drawings for everyone in town to see. Jonathan Schneider, It's a Bully's Story Jonathan Schneider was born on January 3, 1977, and unlike Sharon, he wasn't that much into being playful and kind. Instead, he was more of a spoiled kid trying to be cool and only ever hung out with the cool kids on the block. He would often treat the younger kids like a bunch of assholes and would even snatch away their toys and or their candy and would never give them back. One time, he even bullied a kid so hard that he was grounded for a week. Things began to become really strange for Jonathan when he went to hear school. Although he was still able to pick on children and bully them like he'd usually do at home, he would often do poorly in Baldi's class. And whenever he would get terrible grades or fail to answer the simplest of math questions, he would always be put in his place by Baldi. But on other occasions, when Baldi's trying to track down and discipline his students, Jonathan would often mess with them and block their path in the halls unless they gave him a treat or whatever they had with them at the time. Sometimes he would get what he wanted, other times the students would end up on the floor screaming and crying as Baldi disciplined them, with Jonathan standing there, enjoying every moment of it. It had gotten so bad that Principal Thomas himself had to force him into detention and to give him a long lecture about how bad his behavior was. But no matter what the principal said to him, he would just flat out ignore it as if nothing was ever said to him. Shortly after the switch from pencil and paper to tablet computers, Jonathan began to become much more of a sadistic person, causing the students to get hurt and injured no matter what was given to him. He didn't care if he was given candy or soda or even a teddy bear. He would just stand there with a shit-eating grin as their demise soon came, not giving a single damn about what would happen to them. He would even stay in school after hours and never go home to his family as he found here school to be his new and better home. But that all changed in 2009 when he along with Baldy was arrested. The police found out that Baldy was using Jonathan as a way to harm other students and make sure they never saw their parents again, by taking their stuff and taunting them before their inevitable death. Because of his cruel actions, he has landed behind bars for five years and was released on March 31, 2014. First Prizes Story The first prize was one of many things built for the only science fair that here school hosted. It was built by a depressed child who decided to make a robot companion, and it made everyone feel nice, thus winning the first prize and being named accordingly. During the short time he was at here school, he would rush towards every student in the halls during passing time and would occasionally hug them, but there was this one time where first prize ended up causing the death of one or two students. After this, he began to act pretty sporadic and no longer feel happy, instead he would feel more scared and or depressed. He no longer felt like wanting to hug anyone anymore. No matter how hard Baldy tried to get first prize to move, he just wouldn't budge, so in order to prevent him from sitting in the halls for days on end, he decided to take a sledgehammer and bash the robot into nothing but a heap of scrap metal and broken wires. To this day, the original first prize robot remains in the abandoned schoolhouse, destroyed, decayed, and mostly non-functional. The child went on with his life and became an engineer, who founded the company, First Prize Enterprises, which sells these robots to every boy and girl who wants it. Robert Schultz Got a Sweeps Story Robert Schultz was born on November 4, 1945, three months after World War II. Against his parents' wishes, he decided to become a janitor, and here school was the perfect place for him. The children were always afraid of him, so he looked at his broom and thought, I know what to do. He adopted the personality of Gotta Sweep, the living broom. The kids loved watching Gotta Sweep run crazily through the halls, with his signature catchphrase, Looks like it's sweeping time! Eventually, Baldy was getting fed up with the loudness of Gotta Sweep and decided to put things into order. He forcefully kicked down the classroom door, walked down the halls, and while Robert was in the middle of cleaning one of the faculty rooms, he proceeded to charge at him and beat him to death with his own ruler. 
he told him that if he heard any more fucking noises out of him, that he would take God a sweep, his broomstick, snap it in half and stick it so far up his ass that he wouldn't be able to walk ever again. Although this didn't strike fear into him, it did enrage him. The two of them got into a fight with each other about how he was trying to do his job while making the children feel happier, with Baldy telling him that he didn't give a shit and that they shouldn't be busy playing around and watching that stupid ass broom. Robert would keep telling him that he is nothing but a sorry ass excuse for a teacher and that he didn't care about anyone else's feelings, but Baldy would keep telling him that he should be doing his job sweeping the floors instead of lollygagging around and playing around with the kids. The more Robert kept trying to prove his point, the more Baldy would tell him to shut the fuck up and to stop having fun. I swear to God, if you don't shut the fuck up about your stupid fucking broom, I will have no choice but to cut you into pieces and feed you to the damn children. He yelled. Kids are supposed to learn about math and to only do math. I don't give a shit whether they are scared of your sorry ass or not. You either do your fucking job or get the hell out of here. Because of Baldi's yelling, Thomas came in out of the blue, shocking the two at his unexpected appearance. What's with all the ruckus? He asked angrily. None of your fucking business, Thomas. Baldy replied. Thomas stared as he saw the angry expressions on both of the authority figures' faces. I'm inclined to think this is about that gotta sweep thing, isn't it? Then, without warning, Robert spoke up. Yes, it fucking is. I've been trying to convince Baldy for the past hour why the whole gotta sweep mumbo jumbo is happening, and clearly, he isn't just missing air, he's also missing ears. This shocked Thomas and everyone else who heard it from afar. Thomas kept his cool. Well, Robert, I think it's about time you toned down this funny broom. Don't get me wrong, I'm not against it. It will just calm Mr. Baldy over here. It was 2 to 1. There was nothing Robert could do about it. The following day, the kids waited to see God sweep. What antics could he be up to today? They waited. The day passed. Nothing happened. Robert walked past the kids, depressingly as he swept the floors. It had dawned on them. There was no more of his antics. They barely had time to feel bad before the bell rang, and the kids went into a math class. Robert later retired, and spent the rest of his days in vain. He had accomplished nothing, and would never be able to again. He looked at his broom, sighed, and said, Gotta sleep, before peacefully passing away. Tag Mellow Free's Story Tag Lucas Mellow Free was born on March 5, 1987, and was a pretty happy kid. During his time in school, he was nice and made a lot of friends. But none would step up to Tag's best friend, Joseph Suarez. They were friends through childhood, and shared a lot of interests, but their friendship never really was taken seriously, until third grade came along. Come the day that Tag is supposed to go back to school, and he gets in the car. His parents explain while they are driving. We are going to go into here school, a place guaranteed to teach you a lot of things. Tag's eyes widened. Although he was a bit introverted, he had heard about Baldy and the things he'd do to students. Tag tried to explain, but it wasn't long until they'd reached their destination. With hesitation, Tag stepped foot into the schoolhouse, and was greeted by Baldy and his cheerful facade. Oh, hi. Welcome to my schoolhouse. Baldy said cheerily. Tag thought to himself. This seems fine for now. And for a while, it was. Days passed by, Joseph and Tag were bonding together extremely, and Tag made a new friend. His name was James David. But little did Tag know, James would be a chore to deal with. One day, his parents drove him to school as per usual, and James dropped by to say hi. Hey Tag, how are you doing? He asked. I'm doing fine, I guess. How about you? James looked in his backpack, and was about to answer, when he noticed. Oh no, I forgot my notebooks at school. He said in a worried voice. Tag's face turned from happiness to straight disappointment. Damn it, is this really the time to be losing your notebooks? James turned to Tag, and nonchalantly asked. 
Hey Tag, can you do me a favor and get my notebooks back? Pretty please? Tag sighed, and countered with, Is there anything in return? Then James offered, I'll give you a zesty more. Tag agreed, but then he asked, Hey, why don't you just get them yourself? To which James replied, I would, but then I'd be late getting to eating practice. Eating practice? Tag was confused as to what this meant, but thought nothing of it and went in. Welcome back, Tad. So you know how we've been using pencil and paper this whole time? Baldy asked. Uh, yeah? What about it? Tag replied. Well, we decided that system was outdated. We decided to get you students something new. Tag was shocked, but captivated. What is it? He replied. The brand new, you can think pads. Don't worry, I'll explain as we go along. Tag sighed, and moved on. He was fairly on his way to getting all of James's notebooks, but just two notebooks in, the bell rang. It was time for math period two. Baldy entered the class. Problem one. Five times six equals... Joseph raised his hand and said, Thirty. Baldy told Joseph. Don't raise your hand and tell me. Write your answer down on your tablet. He wrote it down on the tablet, and most people got the question right otherwise. Problem 2 was the same, but then, Baldy asked. Problem 3. Good luck solving this one. Everyone felt very confused. The third problem didn't even look like a math equation. It was just a jumbled mess of numbers, letters, and math symbols. Come on, don't just sit there and stare at the thing all day. Baldy said, raising his voice. Tag was the first to answer, guessing 42. He got it wrong, unsurprisingly. No matter what was written down, the answer would always be marked wrong. One of the students raised his hand. Uh, Mr. Baldy Moore, I think your tablets might be broken. They said, but as soon as the student told him, he got up out of his desk, pulled out his ruler, and headed over to the student's desk. Bullshit. Nothing's wrong with the tablets. The only thing that's wrong is that you can't understand basic fucking math. The rest of the students submitted their answers, which were obviously wrong, so Baldy piped up and told the class. I hear every door you fucking open. Don't even come back to me with this stupid fucking excuse. Thank you, and class is fucking dismissed. The whole entire class left for lunch, but before Tag could take one step out the door, Baldy turned to look at him. His face was as red as a beet, and he was angrier than death. Don't think that I'm finished with you, Tag Melofri. He said, his teeth gritting tightly. You are going to be on my eyes for the rest of the day, so don't think you're fucking safe. Tag gulped in fear. Did he really do that bad during class? And if so, what did he do wrong to have Baldy get so pissed off at him out of all the students? Tag went out of the room, and Joseph walked up to him. Hey Tag, it's okay if you feel scared around that Baldy guy. I'll tag along so he doesn't cause any trouble. Baldy then called out from his room. Remember Mellow Free, I'm always watching you, so don't think you're fucking safe. Tag and Joseph walked together, as a team, and got the rest of the notebooks, with friendly and non-friendly encounters from several students and authority figures along the way. Then he collected the final notebook, the final period started, and Baldy was as angry as ever. Bravo Mellow Free, you've collected all seven of your friends' notebooks, he said. But don't think for a moment that you're going to get out alive, because every single one of those assignments I gave you are wrong. No A's, no B's, just measly C's. Baldy began to stand up from his desk again. I could have given you F's, but the principal would fucking fire me if I did. Why? Cause that's what you are. A fucking failure. <laughs> Tag jolted out as Baldy began laughing insanely and chasing after him, but steadily, and steadily, Baldy was catching up. It seemed like the end for Tag, but at the final stretch, the last corridor to the exit, 
Joseph suddenly appeared out of the blue and gave Tag just enough of a push to get to the exit. Finally, he had done it. He had escaped the school, and all for the sacrifice of his best friend. Yeah, you better fucking run, you piece of shit! I never want to see your ass ever again for as long as I live! Baldy shouted as Tag ran out the exit doors and into the sunlight. His parents came to pick him up and saw him injured and sweaty. Oh my goodness, what happened to you? His parents asked, shocked. Oh nothing, just an encounter with an angry teacher you guys thought didn't exist. Tag said, as if he was done with this bullshit. As he got in the car, he told his parents to never take him to that school ever again. Later, during the weekend, Tag felt sad that his best friend sacrificed himself just to save him. From then on, he decided to become a detective because, in his words, It's what Joseph would have wanted. Adrian McKinney, Arts and Crafters Story Adrian McKinney was born on April 2, 1989 and was a pretty shy artist. When he first showed up to year school, he wasn't one to speak up during class. Usually he was either doodling in class, or doing the math problems silently. But soon, he met someone that soon changed him for the worst. Enter James David. He had more notebooks than Adrian did, but rather than put that aside, and ignore it, he decided to taunt Adrian with his notebooks and overall better academic performance. This would go on for a very long time, Baldy and Thomas would do nothing about it, and overall, Adrian felt very violated. A few days of James taunting Adrian later, he decided to fight back in the only way he could. James walked up to Adrian as per usual, and said smugly. Hey little doodler, you like my notebook collection? Oh golly, I bet you wish you could doodle your useless art onto these pages and be a stupid artist, huh? Adrian had enough. He started screaming at the top of his lungs, hurting James' ears, while at the same time, alerting Baldy. Baldy came up to the two and yelled, What the fuck is going on you two? Adrian replied, James keeps taunting me with his stupid notebooks and his stupid age. And for the past few days, you have done nothing to combat this. To which Baldy said, Does it look like I fucking care about your problems? And held his ruler threateningly. Adrian then said, So caring about your students isn't normal? And Baldy sighed. He had to deal with this one way or another. So he said, in the most deadpan voice imaginable. Listen. You two, never talk to each other ever again. If you even think about it, I will smack you with my ruler so hard you'll be missing a limb. Adrian and James reluctantly agreed, but from then on, Adrian was scarred by that incident. So scared that he never even came into class anymore. He hid his face under a sock, so that nobody knew who he was. The most you could see of him was him passing by hallway once or twice. Some say he's still silently roaming the school to this day. Five years had passed since the horrific incidents that had happened at Hear School and news outlets across the world were going crazy about the stories. But one day, Baldy had a very very bright idea. Come the morning of March 31st, 2014, Tag had just woke up and was about to do his detective work when he noticed there was a letter in the mailbox. He opened it and inside, it was written. Come back to here school. Let's learn a little bit more. The letter had no signature attached to it, but Tag had a feeling that it was Baldy wanting him to come back. But how is that even possible? Baldy told Tag many years ago that he never wanted to see him again, so what was the deal? Also, didn't Baldy go missing after he had broken out of prison? Regardless, Tag decided to go back in, hoping to survive. He entered, and it was very quiet and dark. The school that he had once remembered back in 1999 looked dilapidated and broken. It was like going back to your childhood house, with everything dusty, and vines covering the entrance. Tag yelled out into the darkness. Hello? Is anyone in here? But there was no answer. Suddenly, he heard a loud thump down the main hallway, so like any detective would, he went to investigate. 
As he got closer, the noise grew louder and louder, until he ended up at one of the many classroom doors, which appeared to look slightly broken off its hinges and with splinters sticking out of it. He heard heavy breathing on the other side, so he opened the door reluctantly. On the other side, was none other than, Baldy Baldemore himself. The only difference was that he looked more disheveled and creepy. His clothes were torn and ragged and his eyes, oh god his eyes. His eyes looked like he had seen death itself. Suddenly, Baldy spoke up, with a very raspy voice. Why hello there. Tag Mellow Free. You remember when we chased each other in the hallway? That was fun, right? Tag didn't want to be reminded. He remembered all the times he got chased down the halls and the sacrifice his best friend made just to save him. What do you even want from me all the more? Why did you want me back here? Tag responded in a bitter tone of voice. Baldi then replied. Let's play hide and seek. Like good old times. Tag didn't want anything to do with this husk of a man, so he reluctantly refused. Oh, come on. Don't you just want to at least have fun? For one. Last time? Baldi asked. Tag pulled out his gun and replied to him. No. I don't want to play any more of your stupid fucking games, old man. After what you did to me back in those days, I don't want to have anything to do with you. Not after you killed my old friend. Tag began to become teary-eyed. Oh, your friend is still alive and well, Tag. Just not where you think he is. And soon, you will join him. Baldy began slapping his ruler, walking slowly towards Tag. Tag made a run for it and tried to head for the exit, but it was completely sealed shut. It wouldn't budge. So Tag looked for a hiding spot, since he was doing hide and seek in the first place. He found a classroom, but inside that classroom, was something so peculiar. There were little cells. Each labeled survivors with a number. The cells were holding everyone Tag knew from here school. Thomas, Sharon, etc. But two of these cells stood out to him in particular. His two friends, Joseph and James. James was completely killed, yet Joseph was still alive. Joseph spoke up. Hey dude, can you let me out of here? Tag looked in his pockets, but he had nothing to unlock Joseph's cell door. So Tag told Joseph. Stay here. I'll be back with a key if I find one. Tag continued roaming the halls, going in faculty rooms to find keys. Eventually, he found all the keys, and used them to free everyone. But before he could be proud that he freed everyone, Baldy was right behind him. Found you, Mellow Free! Baldy yelled crazily. Baldy began smacking Tag with his ruler, and everyone was watching in horror. It seemed as if all hope was lost for him. Soon he was going to be trapped inside this abandoned schoolhouse, locked inside of his own cell, never to be seen or heard from again. But then he had a thought. He recalled his memories before he had to collect the seven notebooks for James. James said back then, I'll give you a 64! But James never did, because he was killed. So Tag knew exactly what to do. He struggled against Baldy, and with the last of his power, he picked up a zesty bar from James' backpack, and ate it. Tag started feeling super energetic, and managed to escape from Baldy's grasp. Tag started running away with Joseph, and was fully on his way to escape, but someone familiar was in the way. Jonathan Schneider. Tag was shocked to see Jonathan standing in the way. j j jonathan well, What are you doing here? I thought you were in prison. But Jonathan just stood there, not saying a thing, except giving off that same shit-eating grin he would usually do back in the day. Why aren't you listening to me? Tag asked. Look, there's a psychopath with a bloody ruler after me, and I need to get through. Please. Then Jonathan actually replied. I know. No. To which Tag confusedly said. What? I was let go by the police today, and you're not getting past me. You're going to die. die. Jonathan replied. At this point, Tag had yet a dead end. Either he was going to have to turn around and risk having his life taken away by Baldy or to make Jonathan move. 
but Tag wasn't willing to die in the hands of that crazy psychotic husk of a person, so with all of his might, he shoved Jonathan to the ground and proceeded to unload an entire magazine into his chest. Once Jonathan was fully dead, Tag proceeded to make his escape, but Baldy pulled Tag back in. Or don't leave now. The game has only just begun. Baldy said in a chilling voice. Soon you will join your little friend in your own little cell and you will be with him forever. It was real hopeless for Tag as he was finally thrown into his cell. That was it. Game over. Or was it? Tag knew he had to get out of his cell one way or another, so he devised an escape plan. Hey Joseph. Tag asked. Did you happen to have some sort of weapon before coming here? Joseph looked in his backpack, and found a toy sword. No luck Tag. We are really doomed. Joseph depressingly stated. But Tag didn't want to give up. He took Joseph's toy sword through the cage's bars, and began to repeatedly smack a metal bar with it, hoping it would break off. At first nothing was happening. But then he started going full force with the toy sword, denting it piece by piece until finally, it was broken off. Now with one of the metal bars cut off, he escaped the cage and started exploring the schoolhouse, while Baldy wasn't watching. Tag was walking down a hallway, and suddenly stepped on a piece of paper. He picked it up, with hesitation, and read it. If you're reading this, there's a way out, and you are probably luckier than me. I've had encounters with Baldy. I know his weakness. Six will do. Signed, James. James? Then that meant only one thing. James was enduring the same things Tag was enduring, except he wasn't so lucky, and met a grim fate. But what did six mean? Six bullets? Six slashes? Tag barely had time to marvel at James' cruel fate when Baldy noticed him down the hallway. Shit. Tag yelled as he started getting chased down the hallway. As he ran, he was questioning the nature of the here school incidents. What caused Baldy to snap? Where's first prize? These questions would be left unanswered as Baldy was catching up to Tag. It was then he realized what Six meant. He pulled out his gun, and shot the first bullet at Baldy, viscerally tearing his eye apart. He shot the second and third, each going to his left and right hands respectively. He shot the fourth bullet, cutting Baldy's left leg off. The fifth bullet tore his nose off, dropping like a bouncy ball. Then he shot the last bullet, cutting Baldi's trusty ruler in half, and ending a long-lasting period of torture and unfair rule. But Baldi had one last trick up his sleeve. As he started losing his breath, and his heart stopped beating, he pressed a button. Suddenly, a countdown started ticking. Tag was shocked, and instantly went to free the rest of the survivors, and escaped the schoolhouse with them. Five. Four. Three. Two. One and an explosion blew up the entire school. The survivors were finally free of Baldy Baldemore's unfair torture. The story was finally over. Everyone left to live their lives, but Tag stood there. In all of the place he'd spent a portion of his childhood in, all gone into ashes. The playground, the detention room, all of those, gone. He slowly walked back into his house, accepting that here school was gone for good. A few days later, when the news was talking about the murder of Baldy, someone saw the news and decided to make a game parodying the incidents. It would go on to become Baldy's Basics in Education and Learning. <laughs>